Nobel laureate Professor Muhammad Yunus is an institution, a man of constant innovative ideas and one of the most influential individuals in the world. Dr. Yunus is the father of both social business and microcredit, the founder of Grameen Bank and of more than 50 other companies in Bangladesh. For his constant innovation and enterprise, the Fortune magazine named Professor Yunus in March 2012 as one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time. In 2006, Professor Yunus and Grameen Bank were jointly awarded Nobel Prize, Nobel Peace Prize. Professor Mohammad Yunus is the recipient of 55 honorary degrees from universities across 20 countries. He has received 112 awards from 26 countries, including state honors from 10 countries. He is one of the only seven individuals in the world to have received the Nobel Peace Prize, the United States Presidential Medal of Freedom, and the United States Congress Gold Medal. Welcome to Kuwait and Kuwait Table, Dr. Yunus. Thank you. You are here at the special invitation of His Highness the Amir Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jaber Al Sabah of Kuwait as his guest. Tell us what is the purpose of visiting Kuwait and what you would like to achieve from it? Well, I'm delighted to be invited to Kuwait uh, by uh, His Excellency Damir. Uh, strangely, this is my first visit to Kuwait. I've never been to Kuwait before. So oh, really? Yes, indeed. <laughs> I've been to many countries many times, but somehow Kuwait has uh, uh, not been a place that I have visited in the past. So I'm delighted that I could make it. I was looking forward to this visit. Uh, I'm happy that I get a chance to meet the Amir and also meet the people in Kuwait and uh, explain what's going on with the, my work and what I do, what I am trying to achieve. Uh, and I'm so happy that uh, people are willing to listen to it. Definitely. It will be a very uh, good opportunity for Kuwaiti people to hear you. Your topic of lecture at the Chamber of Commerce is the redesigning of economics to redesign the world. What do you mean by this? One of the issues that I keep raising, the problem that we have created around the world for human beings, are not just accidental. This is by design. Not that we created this to make this happen. Uh, this is the outcome of something that we design, uh, but somehow this kind of negative results came out of it. There are many positive results, but there are negative results also. Uh, if you want to avoid or remove these negative results, uh, point that, that I've been promoting, that we have to look back on the thinking process, the conceptual framework of the entire uh, economic thinking, uh, and remove the flaws into the system. So you need a redesigning process. So once you redesign it, then the problems that we have created in the past can be avoided. And we can have a world which is much better world than we had been before. Uh, it's almost like a building a road. You are building a road and it leads you to some destination, which is a good destination. Uh, but in the way we have created problems by using this road. Uh, if you keep on using the same road, we'll just perpetuate the same problems that we have. In order to avoid those problems, we have to build a new road so that uh, we design the road in, in a way that those problems don't occur and we achieve the goals that we wanted to achieve, meaning that the destination we have defined uh, can be reached without creating problem for other people. So that's what I have been saying, that we need to redesign economics to re redesign the world. For the present design, you get the same old results. What are the results? You create poverty, you create unemployment, 
you create uh, health hazards, you create uh, danger for the world with the carbonization of the economy, uh, you create uh, uh, wealth concentration. Uh, all those things is built into the system. You can tinker with it piece by piece, but that doesn't solve the problem because soon it will come and do, this, do it again unless you have changed the system which created it. Now, microfinance issue. You are a man of ideas. Financing poor without any collateral was an innovative idea, benefiting more than 200 million people, mostly women in the world, that brought you the Nobel Prize in 2006. What is the situation today with the Grameen Bank's concept on poverty alleviation? Grameen Bank started uh, with the intention of fighting the loan sharks. That was the basic thing that in one village we were trying to do that. Uh, the very simple idea that um, one way to fight the loan shark is to provide the loan myself. If I lo provide the loan, they don't have to go to the loan shark. So I said the problem is solved. So I started doing that. Uh, in the process, people switched. It's a, such a simple thing. I can take the money without collateral in a very simple way and not go through the torture of the loan sharks and exorbitant interest and lots of other conditionalities and so on. So that idea grew when we created a bank out of it called Grameen Bank or Village Bank. Today, Grameen Bank works all over Bangladesh. Uh, it's a very successful bank, which is owned by the poor people. It lends money to poor people, particularly poor women. We have eight and a half million borrowers of Grameen Bank today. 97% of them are women. Uh, they start with loans like $30, $35, and gradually move on to take larger and larger loans. Today, Grameen Bank lends out over $2 billion a year. Uh, it's all their internal money. It doesn't come from donor. It doesn't come from government. It doesn't come from external sources. It's all internally generated funds. It's a self-sustaining bank. Grameen Bank is owned by the borrowers. So whatever profit it makes, it goes back to the borrower as a dividend and so on. That idea became known as microcredit or microfinance and became global. So there are many, many programs all over the world. Almost every single country has microcredit programs following the Grameen principles and so on. Uh, some have deviated from principles, created problem for us. Uh, but at the same time, but the basic idea was inspired by the Grameen uh, idea and so on. Uh, I'm sure there are microcredit programs in Kuwait too. I have not seen anyone, but uh, soon I'll uh, learn about it. Uh, but it's everywhere, all over the Middle East, every single country. There are microcredit banks in the Middle East, and there are many other programs all around the world, including in the developed countries. It's not something only for the poor countries. Uh, we run a microcredit program uh, in, in the United States called Grameen America. Uh, today, we started in 2008. Today, there are 18 branches all over the United States in 11 cities. There are eight branches in New York City. In total, there are about 65,000 borrowers in all these 18 branches uh, come in America. 100% women. Uh, repayment rate is nearly 100%. It's 99.9%. Wow. And uh, self-sustaining. It covers its own cost. And women start their loans in the United States with about $1,500 and gradually move up uh, to take larger and larger loans. And it's become very popular in the United States. So it's not just a poor country phenomenon. There are many programs in Europe, in France. It's a nationwide program in France. There are programs in Norway. There are programs in Germany. Uh, in many, every single country in Europe, uh, you have microcredit programs. So it's, a, it's a not a problem of one country or other. It's a basic fault in the banking system. What we did, we tried to create a system which works for the poor people. Because the present banking system is actually is a banking system for the rich. Poor doesn't feature in this banking. So there's nothing there where you can go and poor people can go and do business with them. So we had to create a separate bank. We called it Grameen Bank. It's a bank for the poor, exclusively. Bank for the rich cannot deal with the poor. As a result, more than half the population in the world are excluded from bank financial services. And it's a shame because that's where your starting point is. If you don't have money, you can't take the next step to change your life. Nobody gives you the money. 
so they remain poor. So we said, no, we can change the whole banking system. That was our idea. And they gradually it expanded, but still it's not taken as a part of the financial institutions. It's almost like a footnote. Uh, it works, everybody applauds it, but it's a separate thing. So I said it should be mainstream. You have to create new series of banks, bank for the poor. Like you have the banks, which are the bank for the rich, but they don't say there's a bank for the rich. Bank for the rich are designed to expedite the concentration of wealth. It is the most powerful instrument in the concentration. As a result, we have a very strange world right now. 99% of the world wealth is owned by 1% of the population of the entire world. Remaining, 99% of the people has only 1% of the people, wealth of the nation, world. And th next year, it will be worse. Each year, it gets worse. Why? Because the financial institution is helping the concentration of the wealth. So we have to address that. We have to make sure that this doesn't, this doesn't go on the way it does right now. So how to redesign the banking system so that it works for every person, not just for the rich person. The basic principle of banking is the more you have, the more you get. And that is the essence of wealth concentration. Because you have more, then you become more. So wealth concentrates in your hand, and other people don't have anything left for them. So that was our intention, and that's what we are still struggling, still explaining how to design those banks, how to run those banks so that people can make their own life. Wow. There is much debate about microfinance today, when and how and where it works. How would you describe the state of the field? Well, it depends on what you mean by whether it works. It works for what? It works as a bank, it does. That's why Grameen Bank existed, that's why it expanded. Uh, there is no question about it. Uh, whether it can function as a business, you give the money without collateral, whether people will pay back. And microcredit, I mean, bank has become known globally for its excellent repayment rate. So definitely it works. It's a banking, it's perfect, there's no problem. Sometimes it does better than the banks for the rich, where rich people take money, don't pay back. And if you go to a country like Bangladesh, you'll see, if you are looking at the defaulters list, you will see the top people in the country are the defaulters, whereas the poor people are very diligent and pay their loans back. So from that angle, you say, of course it works. It's a bank which earns money, pays back the in, dividend to the borrowers as the shareholders and so on. And it can be ex expanded, like we expanded within the country, say, all over the country and so on, it can be done. So if you are looking whether it works as a banking proposition, I don't think there is any question left. Uh, you may say, does it help in uh, changing the quality of life of the poor people? Definitely you can ask that. But that's a separate question. You can do that. Uh, in Grameen Bank, the, owner, the borrowers own the bank. So this is a positive thing. They own a bank collectively. Uh, they, we encourage savings. Right from the beginning, when we had a small little thing in one village, we, in, our policy is you must open a bank account, savings account, so that you save even a penny a week, you do that. It became a habit, it became expanded, and gradually that savings became larger and larger portion of their money. Today, as I said, we lend out over $2 billion a year. There are more than $2 billion in the deposits in their savings account. So this is a positive thing, which they started with zero practically. Now today, collectively, they own more than $2 billion in their savings account, which is cash available to them anytime they want. Uh, as a bank account, you can withdraw their money. So that's a positive thing they have done. Uh, they used to borrow $30, $35 in the beginning. Today, they borrow $10,000, $15,000. So it's a long journey, the fact that they can Someone who started life with $35 now can take $10,000 and pay you back with interest. So that's a very positive thing. And Grameen Bank offers uh, education loan so that children can become uh, educated uh, with the higher education. So we have many PhDs, they have master's degrees and so on because all the education is provided with the education loan. So that's another angle. So if you look at those things, the varieties of things that happen, it's a positive thing. 
But it's still, you say that uh, there are questions about the microcredit. The question comes from a different angle. Question comes from the angle, some of them trying to make personal money by doing microcredit, which is a deviation from what we are talking about the subject. We are talking about microcredit to help poor people. That's why the Grameen Bank is all about everything originated from Grameen Bank. Some smart, quote unquote, smart people thought, ah, this is a great idea. Why don't we lend money to poor people and make money out of them? Commercialized it. And in the process, interest rate went up. In the process, they couldn't care less what happened to them. And all the problems began. So we have to criticize them, condemn them along the way that this is not microcredit, this is loan sharking. So you have to distinguish between microcredit and loan sharking. Those problems that you referred to came from the loan sharking idea, not from the microcredit side in the sense that we are devoted to helping poor people. Our attention was not pers making personal money. Our attention is to help pe poor people get out of poverty. And we concentrate on women. This is one another subject. In Bangladesh, we have 97% women, as, as we told you. In the United States, we have 65,000 borrowers. 100% women, not a single man in the whole program. So this is another aspect of it. And again, it uh, works beautifully. We had no problem wherever. So wherever we are involved, wherever people followed our principles, uh, I don't think uh, you have that problem. Uh, microfinance is an established and recognized instrument to fight and alleviate poverty today. Many people are confident and hope that poverty can be eliminated through it. Is not it too simple just to rely on microfinance? I don't think anybody has claimed that microcredit will 